Okay, so welcome back. Um, now this video is going to be part one in a series where we are going to develop from scratch a real-world electrical engineering simulator software. And we're going to simulate some real-world switches and circuit breakers. And we're going to do a time step simulation. We're going to be using C Sharp and a basic Windows Forms application. And we're going to see how you might approach it from an engineering perspective to develop a simulator software. And simulator softwares in the engineering world are fairly common. Um, when you have to simulate how actual equipment is going to respond, uh, you do a simulator software. So we're going to develop it from scratch. And, and basically, I've got this software pretty much 90% done. So we're going to go back and go through some of the steps uh, you might want to consider and some of the lessons I learned in doing this. So I'm going to run this just to show you uh, what direction we're going to be headed. Now this is the um, UI for this uh, simulator software. And um, I've got, um, you can see there's a lot of UI stuff going on here. I've got uh, an image and I've got some radio buttons and I've got some labels and text boxes. And um, I've got some output stuff down here, uh, grid view. And um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to simulate this circuit that you see in this uh, image up here. Now, what is this simulator doing? Well, this image up here, you can see there's two squares and there's some lines. Now, what is that? Well, these squares are simulating what's called a circuit breaker. And there's two of them on this circuit. And there is an electrical circuit connecting those two circuit breakers. So what is a circuit breaker? Well, in your home, probably down in the basement, you have a panel that has circuit breakers. And the purpose of a circuit breaker, it's basically an on-off switch. And as you may know, you've got multiple circuits running through your house or your apartment that feed the outlets. And a circuit breaker's job is pretty much twofold. One is to turn on and off the circuit. So it's basically, again, it's an on-off switch. But also it's got another function, and that is to measure continuously how much current is flowing through that circuit. Now, what is current? Well, as we talked in some of the previous videos on the basics, um, current in the electrical world is very similar to current in the in the water world. So you've got water pipes going through your house, or your apartment, and there's a certain amount of water flowing through, right? How many gallons per minute are flowing through the pipes? And that's kind of analogous to current in an electrical world, although in the electrical world, you can't actually see the flowing current. But it's kind of similar. Now, in the electrical world, it's, it's also similar to the hydraulic or water world in that, let's say you've got in your house, you've got these pipes feeding water to your faucets, your sinks. Um, what happens if suddenly you get a leak in the pipe or a pipe breaks and suddenly you're going to have this water spewing out all over the basement or all over your room? Um, that is kind of the purpose of a circuit breaker, to monitor how much current is flowing in the line and if that exceeds a certain amount, it tells you, hey, there's something going on in this circuit. Uh, maybe there's a broken pipe, the equivalent of a broken pipe, and suddenly we've got a lot of water flowing that, that shouldn't be flowing. So what the circuit breaker does, it, it continuously monitors how much current is flowing on that circuit. If it gets above a certain value, it says, hey, wait a minute, we got a problem. I'm going to open the switch, okay? So it, it's an on-off switch that also monitors how much current, and if the current seems, exceeds a certain value, uh, it will automatically open the switch. And I've got two of those on this circuit. So this diagram shows um, basically an electrical circuit and has two circuit breakers, one on each end. And in between those is modeling like the power lines flowing uh, or going through your neighborhood and feeding your house. So between these two circuit breakers, I've got a bunch of customers tapped off 
and that could be your house it could be um, an apartment building it could be a, a business or it could be some some retail stores so basically in this circuit we're modeling um, two circuits feeding a set of customers and if I open this breaker but close this you can see I'm still feeding those customers up to this open circuit breaker and vice versa so <clears throat> we're going to simulate this system and um, one of the things that you might uh, realize with this circuit let's say I've got a problem over here um, I want to, as if I had a broken pipe in your house, I want to disconnect that, but it would be also nice if there's a problem here. So I just want to isolate the problem to this area, but still serve these customers. So if I have two circuit breakers, what I can do, I can add a switch, for example, and that's what we're going to simulate here. I can put a switch in the circuit and if there's a problem here on the left, then um, I will disconnect this circuit to fix the problem, but I can close this circuit breaker and still feed these customers. So that's what the simulator is going to do. It's going to add in, allow you to add in some automatic switches on the circuit, and we're going to simulate those switches. And what those switches do, they're, they're a lot like the circuit breaker. But instead of measuring current flow, what they're going to do is they're going to measure whether the circuit on either side of the switch has electricity. And if it has electricity, it will say, oh, okay, that means this circuit breaker is closed. I've got electricity here, so I'm going to close the switch after a certain amount of time. If there's no electricity, which means this circuit breaker is open, it will automatically open after a certain amount of time. And that will out allow you to do what's called sectionalizing and isolate a section of the circuit while feeding the other section. Okay, so that's basically what this is going to do. So let me run this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate this circuit with one switch and I'm going to put a fault or a short circuit. And that's kind of like, you know, a tree coming into the power lines outside your house might cause a short circuit and this is going to see a lot of current flow this circuit breaker and it's going to open up so um, what this does is I can say okay I want a single switch here which I've just simulated and then I'm telling it okay I'm finished configuring the circuit I'm going to hit this and now it's going to automatically label the buses or the lines connecting the the switches so I've got two buses or two lines one bus one and bus two and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to have a fault on bus one. So I'm going to enter one. And then I'm going to say that this um, switch senses voltage on bus two. So I'm going to enter two. And now I'm all ready to do a simulation. Now, these circuit breakers have default values. In other words, if they, in this case, if they see a short circuit, uh, this one will open after three seconds. And you can also set it to try again later. It will it'll open after three seconds and then it will wait in this case 10 seconds and try it again and see maybe this the, the tree that came into the line is gone. Maybe the short circuit is gone. And in this case, it will try three times. It'll wait 10 seconds, close, monitor the current. If the current's still there, still there it will open. Wait 10 more seconds and do that over and over. So let's take a look. Let's run this. And you can see it automatically starts out. Orange means the circuit breakers are closed. I've got my fault here and this switch automatically closes. So now white means the circuit breakers are open. Um, this switch sees no voltage and it opened. Now these both close in. Um, this guy, since the switch is open, um, this guy doesn't see a fault until this closes. So now, um, depending on where the breaker is and the position of the switch, it may or may not see the fault. Okay, down here I've got for every one second time step, I am putting the position of the circuit breaker or CB and the disconnect, the motor operated automatic switch. 
Uh, I'm putting the um, status. So that's basically what this does. Um, I'm going to stop this and run it again with a more likely scenario. And I'm going to do two switches. And I'm going to say topology complete. And you can see it automatically numbers these buses. And I'm going to say there's a fault on bus one. So I'm going to enter one. And this is going to sense bus one. And this is going to sense bus three. And I'm going to run it. So now I've got a fault over here. These are closed. Both circuit breakers see the fault, so they open. These stay closed um, for 10 seconds. Then the electricity is gone, so they open. And now this, these are both closed again. This guy is going to see the fault since he's connected to it. But since these are, switches are open, this guy won't see it. So this guy is closed, feeding these customers up to this open switch. And this guy is dealing with this fault. So it's closed. He's going to open again after three seconds. The fault is still there, but this switch is open because it's sensing voltage over here. And then this goes, guy is going to try again. But again, this guy on the right doesn't see the fault since this is open. So he's successfully feeding the customers, even though there's a fault on the line. So that's a good way to isolate the fault to this area, and but still feed customers. So this guy has tried three times to close, but every time he closes, the fault is still there. So he has done what's called locked out. So he is permanently open while this guy stays closed up to this open switch and he's successfully feeding customers. So that's the whole purpose of this, to um, isolate a problem in just one area and allow the rest of the circuit to continue. Okay, so that's the simulator. So what I'll do is I'll start it again and we'll kind of break down the different components we're going to have to design. So again, we've got these radio buttons and the user basically selects what type of device they want to install in this area. So for example, in this case, I say none. In this case, I want two switches and it automatically installs them in the circuit. And let's say here, I just want one or a single uh, switch and I can click that. And down here, um, you can see it automatically updates this diagram. So we're going to have to think about how we're going to do that uh, after the um, radio buttons are checked. And then you can see it automatically gives us some settings that we can enter uh, to define how these uh, circuit breakers and MODs or, or automatic switches respond. Okay. So for example, for the circuit breaker, um, this has a three second open time. So if it sees a, a, a fault a short circuit, it will open after three seconds and then it will wait and it will reclose, which is what this R1, R2 and R3, uh, it will try in this case three times to reclose, but it will wait 10 seconds to see if the problem goes away. So it'll try after 10 seconds and then if there's a uh, short circuit, it will trip and then try again. If, the, if it remains, it will trip after three seconds and so on. And both of them will do that. Now the user can change those. Um, I could change this to five seconds. I could change this to five seconds. So we're, we're putting in defaults that the user can either leave or they can change it to however they want. And the same is the case for these automatic switches. Um, it's got, in this case, it has an open timer, which means if it, it senses no electricity, it says, okay, well, this is open. So I need to open also, and in this case, it will take five seconds to open. And then after it's opened, it will wait 10 seconds to close to see if the problem's gone away. Um, and you, so you can enter a bunch of stuff in terms of settings, but also we've got some defaults that come up um, when you initialize, okay? So we're starting to see, we're gonna have a lot of UI stuff here. And what happens once I've got this <clears throat> defined how I want these switches uh, configured, what I do is I select this checkbox here and I say, okay, the topology is complete. I've decided how I want these. And we've got a, a procedure in here that automatically says, oh, okay, well, I've only got 
one, two, three, four buses remaining, and I'm going to automatically number these. I'm going to figure out what the buses are and based on the user input and automatically number these. So now the user can say, okay, this is bus one. So here's bus two, here's bus three, bus four. Where do I want the fault to happen? Well, let's say we want it on bus two. So I put in a two here. Now all I have to do is tell the simulator for each switch, what bus is it using to sense voltage? So in this case, let's say bus one. For this switch, we'll say bus three. And for this switch, we'll say bus four. So now the user has put in all the information and we're going to hit the start button and it's going to go through and it's going to do a simulation. And as you can see, it starts out with everything closed. It applies the short circuit, the fault, and you can see every second it tells you the status of each of the devices. So as you can see, as it goes along every second, um, all of these are open. These circuit breakers can stay closed. They don't see the short circuit because the switches are open. And then suddenly this one closes. So this circuit breaker is going to see the fault and it's going to open and it's white, which means it's open. This guy is going to close. It doesn't see the short circuit and this switch is closed. So now this switch is going to close. Suddenly this will see the short circuit and open. And you can see every second we have to go through and calculate the status of all of the devices and update the diagram. So this can get very complicated because, you know, the circuit breaker has to decide, well, do I see the fault? Do I see a short circuit? In this case, it saw it and it opened. And for the switches, it's a little bit different. It's, do I see voltage, in this case, on bus four? So here it's open, so there's no voltage on bus four. So it's a fairly complicated logic that we're going to have to deal with. And at the end of the simulation, we finally, uh, each breaker has decided it's tried three times and still keeps seeing the fault, so it's locked out. So um, here I've got a one second update on the status of everything. And here I've got some, uh, basically a logging output where I can uh, take some of the important logic in our simulator and output it to see if everything's working okay. So this gives you a feel for the kind of stuff we're going to need to um, develop and the plan we're going to need to make in order to get this all working. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to start out and we're going to take an engineering approach. And the engineering approach is to first figure out and design the application before we jump in and start coding. Now, I know a lot of software developers really don't like the idea of, you know, spending time on designing stuff. They just want to jump in and write code. Um, in the engineering world, that is deadly. That is a huge mistake because you end up thinking you know the answer, especially with something very complicated like this. You think you know the answer, you jump in and you start writing code, and you get, you know, two weeks into it and you say, oh, goodness, I forgot. I need to consider this, and I've just wasted two weeks of work. Uh, very bad idea to just jump in and write code. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the smart thing. We're going to take an engineering approach, and we're going to design this application, and we're going to think first before we act. And it's going to be uh, good because it gives another, another big benefit. If you kind of write out your plan into like a block diagram form or a, a general design, that gives you a very good starting point to kind of fill in the blocks with your code. So if you break it down into functions and blocks, um, that helps you and you can say, oh, okay, well, I've got a block here that I designed. I know how to code that. It's a lot easier now that I've got these clear blocks and functionality. So the next video, we're going to look at planning and how to do this right. And I strongly encourage you, I know people, again, don't like to plan. I encourage you to take a, uh, to, you know, take the engineering approach and actually design it first and think about what you're going to do. So we're going to start that in the next video. Uh, hope you join us. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.